Hey everyone, it's Eric Dor here. In today's video, I want to discuss the relationship between perfectionism and narcissism. Now, while this video might sound a bit controversial, I mean, well, after all, why am I lumping perfectionism and narcissism together and why do I want to discuss this relationship in the first place? Do I imply here that all perfectionists are narcissists? Hardly. The only thing I want to show is that on some level, perfectionists and narcissists operate on similar standards. To illustrate this, I want to give an example. It's said that today, most successful people, leaders, politicians, score high, quite high on the scale of narcissism and on the dark triad for sociopathy, Machiavellianism, and an unhealthy <laughs> form of narcissistic behavior. These people often have a very high image of themselves and see themselves as better than other people. They often tend to see other people as below them in terms of status, power, and influence, and as less, less important these kind of people tend to feel quite comfortable with manipulating other people and tend to be quite good at it. The way I see it, narcissists are generally perfectionists. Similar to perfectionists, narcissists strive towards being the best version of themselves and so because of this, narcissists can be very focused on the, gro the goal of personal growth and changing themselves to model a kind of perfect image to society. These kind of people tend to have one core fear, and the core fear of the narcissist is shame. Narcissists don't have an incapacity to experience shame, but they avoid it at every cost. The perfectionist, <laughs> the, the perfectionist is a person that in many ways tries to become and illustrate a model of perfection so that they don't have to experience shame, so that they never have to be criticized and questioned again. The narcissist is a person that tries to avoid and hide and cover up any flaw or any issue they have, avoid every sign of criticism, avoid every problem, and the narcissist tends to put the shame on you. You are the one in the wrong. You're always the one at fault. You're always the one that did the mistake. Narcissists, like perfectionists, tend to struggle with experiencing shame, and narcissists tend to turn their perfectionism into anger with the outer world, anger at those that uh, hold them to negative standards, anger at those that criticize them, anger at them that illuminate and show their flaws and moral shortcomings. The perfectionist, like the narcissist, tries to avoid shame at every cost, and no wonder why. Shame is quite hard. <laughs> shame is quite difficult to deal with. Can you imagine the fact that we are constantly bombarded with images today about how we're supposed to be? We're supposed to look amazing, uh, talk in a great way. We're supposed to be charismatic. We're supposed to be popular. We're supposed to be happy, successful in every version of the word. Our home needs to always look shiny and clean. Everything we have needs to be new and everything we wear needs to be adjusted to the season and to the uh, trends that are in play in today's society. We all strive to model ourselves according to a perfect ideal with the hope that we'll never be criticized again. The goal is that if only I work a little bit harder, change a little bit more about myself, fix a little bit more, then other people will stop criticizing me and I'll stop feeling that shame, stop feeling that feeling that I'm not good enough. However, perfectionism is modeled based on outer standards and outer standards are constantly changing. Therefore, we can never be perfect. No matter what you do, you'll get criticized for it. If you turn left, people will say you should have turned right. And if you turn right, other people will say you should have turned left. Often, being a YouTuber can feel in a similar way. I'm constantly making videos for hundreds of thousands of people and here I get so many different expectations on me, on my performance and how I, what my content should be like, what kind of videos I should make. And ultimately, if you model yourself after external standards, you'll never feel happy and you'll always feel like there's something missing, like you should have done something differently, like you should have done something better. Therefore, I think perfectionists should take a time to reconsider their relationship to shame and also their relationship to their perfectionism. I think it's time that you face the facts that constantly chasing after a better version of yourself can lead to detrimental feelings of constant shame and constant feelings of not being good enough. And these kind of feelings, this kind of behavior can become over time deeply problematic Often, people that started out as perfectionists that managed to attain higher 
levels of being, in a sense, higher levels of success, higher levels of fame, higher levels of status, can spiral in a deeply unhealthy way, even though you get everything you wanted, even though you got the house, the pool, the car, the family, the kids, and all those things, there can be this feeling that uh, over time you become more and more entitled. You start feeling like other people owe you things. You start feeling like other people should always like you. You should start feeling like I'm perfect, I'm accomplished, I've worked so hard on myself. Everyone needs to love me, everyone needs to like me, everyone needs to agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, that's because you're wrong, that's because there's something wrong with you. So in some degree it makes sense that some of the most successful people in the world develop and start to show signs of narcissism. It's that hard work and hard effort that they put into themselves, eventually leading to a sense of entitlement and a sense of superiority. Over time these people mo move from this feeling that they are never good enough to that and nobody else is ever good enough. And here I want you to think about how you approach yourself and how you approach the world. The truth is if you look at nature everything is already perfect just the way it is. If you go into a forest, you'll never complain about how a tree is uh, too much to the left or how a squirrel doesn't have a long enough tail or that um, that uh, plant or flower isn't purple enough. In nature, everything is perfect just the way things are. And similarly, this is the concept that humanity has forgotten, the concept of how everything is and has value for itself by itself. Can you come to believe that you are good enough just the way you are? And can you come to accept yourself just the way you are? Self-love is different from narcissistic self-worship. And so you want to think about what that difference is and what that means for you. I'm not saying you shouldn't work on yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't set goals for yourself. But I'm saying that if you say, do things for yourself, you should do it for yourself because you want it. And often people don't really know this. Many perfectionists tend to swear to the fact that, no, I'm just doing what I want for myself. It's not my parents' fault that I'm perfectionistic. It's not my teacher's fault that I'm, I have high expectations. These are my expectations. These are my desires for myself. And similarly to how people say that I'm not influenced by advertisements. I make my own decisions. People want to swear to a belief in free will and to swear to a belief that they are in control. But the question is how much in control are you really? And are you really sure about where those expectations come from? The truth is I think narcissism evolved and has increased in society today as a kind of response to the constant advertising that we are bombarded with. The expectations that you have derived come from this feeling of constantly being exposed to your own shortcomings. Uh, this perfectionism that you have, it's something you have chosen for yourself, something you have come to believe that you need to be and to embody in order to respond to all the expectations that you see around you in your society. You're constantly told on Instagram, social media, Facebook about who you should be and what it means to be popular and what it means to be successful. And your perfectionism is evolved as a response to make sure that you can meet those expectations. You're trying to play the societal game, you're trying to become successful, but your metrics of success depend completely on other people and on being better than other people. You're only as good as how much more popular your latest YouTube video is compared to other YouTubers. You're only as beautiful as you get attraction and you get dates and you get matches on Tinder. You're only as liked as other people are less liked than you. If other people get admiration or praise, that means you're not getting admiration and praise. and That means you're doing something wrong. So you need to constantly top everyone else, be better than everyone else, work harder than everyone else in order to feed into this cycle of perfectionism. Instead, why not just compete with yourself? Why not just think, how can I be my best version of myself? And how can I tomorrow be an even better version of myself than I was today? Instead of competing with other people, try to compete with yourself and try to work on how that you, <laughs> you can be just who you are. How can a tree be as much a tree as possible? How can a squirrel be as much a squirrel as possible? How can an INFJ be as much an INFJ as possible? How can an ESTP be as much an ESTP as possible? And what is the best version INFJ of yourself? What is the best version ESTP of yourself? These are the kind of questions I want people to think about because they align yourself more with yourself and your flow state. 
and they help reduce unhealthy stress and perfectionism. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.